Hey, welcome back. So we had day three, and uh, some of the main things that we got into was problems themselves. What makes a problem? It's interesting, because I think a lot of people think that problems are made because of situations, because of other people, when in fact, that's not the case. I mean, the difference between somebody who misses a subway car, feels bad about it, gets angry about it, versus somebody who misses a subway car and actually feels happy, all comes down to thoughts. The second person doesn't see that as a problem, so it isn't a problem. What makes a problem a problem is how the person perceives it, and then how much thought process they put into it. And it seems the more thoughts they think about that scenario, the more emotional energy is put into the problem and strengthens it. With the case of somebody who, I guess, got bit by a dog as a kid, they can create tons and tons and tons of thoughts about it to the point that they are afraid of dogs and, and they can't stand them. They get sick seeing a dog. So we looked at that. We looked at problems and we also looked at the beginning of the solutions to those problems. And the interesting thing is, is that it's not about going in deep, looking at all of the details of the problem, why it happened and this and that. It's more about looking at the patterns, looking at the memories, and going in and changing the patterns, changing the emotion, em emotions, wow, changing the emotions associated with those patterns to something that feels better. So you don't actually have to go in at all of the negative stuff, feel uncomfortable about it, and, and then it resolved, which is kind of interesting. It's a different kind of way of doing things for sure. And it's interesting because, you know, you hear things like The Secret and stuff like that, and people talk about, you know, just going and, and being positive about it, trying to be, think more positively. I always thought that was kind of crap. Um, that you had to actually look at it, look at the why, deal with everything. But it's interesting because it kind of is with looking at the positives. Bringing, but it, it's not about ignoring the negatives. It's not about ignoring your emotions. It's about associating good feelings to those situations. And then from that good feeling place, you can find solutions to problems. Or rather, the person can find solutions. And sometimes maybe you have to add more information, or tell a story, or something. But ultimately, it's the client who's figuring all this out, we're just guiding. And one of the really cool ways to go about changing a person's um, emotional state when it comes to problems is to, well, one, get them, we can get them into a, a state, we can get them to think about the situation, and then we ask questions, um, which disrupts their pattern gets them to think subconsciously about the situation in a different way. And it's strange because it actually works, and I don't understand why, <laughs> not really, but it works. And it's actually pretty cool, and it's not like, you know, a lot of the therapies out there either. I don't think any other fit therapy is like this, to be honest. And personally, going through the class, I'm starting to notice a, a shift. Um, I've 
started to notice like how negative I have been. You know, some of the stuff that I would talk about, questions I would ask myself and other people. You know, I'd, I'd be in a kind of negative state, and now I'm I'm kind of shifting. Um, I know for up until this point. I think I've I've had a lot of negativity inside and I've kind of had this belief that you know being positive is naive and stupid and stuff like that to a degree but now it's like I want to be positive and I want to let that stuff go so we'll see how that changes and uh, we'll see what uh, what happens what I learn and go from there. Until then, I'll see you at the next video. Alright, have a good one. Bye. If you'd like to see any of the previous videos, click on the following links below and watch them now.